Hello everyone, this is Thursday, um, February 19th, and um, lots been going on with me. I won't say a whole lot, but I've had um, two job interviews since Monday, and then on the same day, Monday, um, I've gotten a call um, from uh, my GYN. Um, I've been having this condition called menorrhea. And well, what that is, it's just a fancy medical term for really heavy, heavy uh, menstrual periods. So I've been battling that condition for quite a long time, uh, but it has been, it had progressively gotten worse for ever since summer of last year, and it's gotten worse ever since the last couple of months. Really bad. Um, so uh, fortunately, uh, God has moved in that area and made it possible uh, for me to. Um, get a what they call a uh, oblation of uh, what they call an endometrial um, oblation and what that is is that they just go up in there and they just burn the inner um, uterine lining because that's how you get your period that time of the month um, and um, it's not patient procedure and everything went well I had just had the procedure done yesterday and um, so that's really been really uh, it's a big relief right now I'm feeling pretty well yesterday I was kind of out of it being under anesthesia and everything else but just to give you an update of what I've been up to and um, like I said I only had two job interviews on Monday and uh, nothing since then and, and then like I said I just had a um, opening for the uh, surgery to come on on uh, for me which was really great though so um, now I'm getting my health together and um, I still haven't heard any more as far as job interview calls. I've been sending out more resumes and applying to, you know, uh, job ads. So I'm still plucking away. Uh, but I know God's got something in store for me. When, I don't know, but I know he's working on it. So anyway, um, enough about me. Um, but just to just give you a brief update with what's going on with me. Anyway, um this video I'm answering um, a lady's uh, from the UK as I mentioned in the last video uh, I'm mentioning um, I'm gonna be talking about we've, we've put about a total of emails back and forth be between me and her about total about five so um, I have to say she's from the UK and um, I'm not gonna mention age because I know some people get touchy with age but I can say I'm 44 I'm not afraid to say how old I am but let's just say that she's much older than I am so I'll leave I'll leave it at that because like I said the last thing I want to do is really offend anybody I know some people get touchy with their age and I just kind of just would just say well okay the person's older than I am and just leave it at that but anyway um yeah uh, she had a uh, wrote me an email and um believe that she um, is really starting to really figure out what's going on uh, with her family and starting to really realize you know um, about the narcissism in her family and um, if I remember right though um, she discovered the narcissism about her mother about a year ago but you know how you come across you say okay my mom's a narc but you know you're still don't have quite the picture all together until you start figuring things out with the rest of the dynamic dynamics of the family so this is what this lady has done and I guess now she's come in the full circle and right now the gist that I get from her emails that we were emailing back and forth to each other the gist that I get is that she feels pretty robbed about it I mean you know what if her mom wasn't a narc she could have had a better life type of thing that's the gist that I get and honey, you can't really beat yourself up on it, you know. I mean, you got to realize, hey, there's many, many people that's in your situation. And believe me, I feel you. I know, I know. yeah, I felt robbed in a lot of ways myself, you know what I mean. Of course, you know, when, you know, my narcissistic mother and enabling father, when she brought in these twin daughters of hers, uh, from her first marriage because everything was pretty cool and fine you know until she brought these uh, twin girls of hers from another marriage and I won't mention their names but yeah even this day I despise them I hate them because I felt like these women 
took away things that I could have had. Yeah, I felt that way. You know, I still have, you know, some hatred because I really felt like they took away my childhood along with my mother, you know, and, but I guess it was some type of guilt trip thing, you know, so about my mom maybe abandoning them when she divorced and married my father, you know, there's a lot to it, you know, I, I don't know all the details, but I can only suspect, but yes, I, even to this day, you know, um, I don't think too much about it, you know, but from time to time when I do, I still hate their guts, but I don't let it dominate my thoughts. I don't let it be anything that I think about. I, right now, I try to focus on the good, focus on getting my health together, um, and focusing on getting my career back online. But yes, I know exactly what it feels like to be robbed. You know, I've been robbed, like I said, of my childhood because of my narcissistic mother and bringing those twin girls in. Yes, definitely. I, I feel you. Um, I felt robbed just of my childhood itself, you know, um, my narc mom, you know, really, you know, I got made fun of by kids, even growing up, even like grades, what, fourth and up, you know, I got made fun of having holy shoes and hand-me-downs and charity news, he's been laughed at, oh, believe me, I've been there, so I've been robbed of childhood that way, never really got to experience much in my childhood you know I think the only things I can remember coming up as I was able to play softball for a little bit in high school and then I got involved with the first guy that that um, I was with which became my husband at some point um, but yeah you know and then when I had my, my my children of course my narcissistic mother robbed me of my own motherhood never gave me a chance to be a mother to my own kids always pushed me aside and took over and act like I didn't know what I was doing well hell since when do you since when has anybody become born a mother since when do babies ever come with with instructions you know the only way you can be a mother and a good mother is by trial and error and my narcissistic mother never allowed me to experience that all she never did was get in the way so yeah I know what it's like to be wrong trust me and then with her trying to run me being a grandmother, well, that's still kind of a battle. But um, I just decided at some point, hey, i got to put it in God's hands. This is something I can't handle. This is something that I just know I want to draw the line and just tell God, time to take over. I can't do no more. This is all that you've given me the strength to do. Time for you to take over. Take the wheel. So believe me, when it comes to robbery, believe me, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. But you, but you know what? At some point, you can't let that dominate your mind. You know, you really can't. Um, yes, it's hurtful. Yeah, you wish you could have had a, a better life if your mother wasn't a narc or if you were adopted. I, I used to think that. I thought that way at one point, but then... Then, then if you're on, if you were adopted, if your mother were, narc mom were to put it to you for adoption, I think the hurt would be much greater in a way because then you're wondering, okay, what well, how come you gave me away, you know? And then you feel like you're thrown away, you feel like you're a piece of trash and a reject, you know. Even if you want, wish that your mom would have, you know, adopt your narc mom would have, you know, put you for adoption. So I think, in my, this is just my opinion. Uh, I think it would just be the pain would be greater. You know as far as rejection is concerned so yeah it's very very touchy so um but like I said at some point you know we've all been robbed of things you know coming from you know being brought up from a narcissistic mother and enabling father we all have been and I know I've been I'm definitely no exception the only thing I can really advise you from that is like you have to come to an understanding of what happened to you and I understand that this is basically the phase is where you're at you have to just say, okay, understand it for what it is, and you have to accept it, you know, accept the fact that this was done to you, but the rest of your life doesn't have to be that way, and because you're in a, you're, you know, a little older than me, doesn't really mean that your life's over with, or it's never too late, it's never too late, you know, you have to just basically just cut your losses and say, okay, that was them, 
I'm not going to let my past define my future. Understand what's happened to you. Understand that you had a narcissistic mother and, you know, and, you know, father and siblings all mixed into it. Understand, okay, that's the family you had, you know, but you don't need to make that the family for the rest of your life. Basically, you just have to cut them off, you know, um, you really have to. Um, because if you don't, they're going to continue to poison your life. It, and anybody associated, I've mentioned this several times, even with people associated with the, with, with your narc family, you got to let them go too. Because if you're not, you're just continually letting that poison get into you. They still have access to you. The thing is, you just got to think of anybody possible that could have access to you in relation to your narcissistic mother and the rest of the family. You know, you have to cut those ties off. You really have to. Even if things are kind of cool, I still, this is just my advice. Still the balls in your court. But my advice, you have to cut it off. You got to cut the poison off all the way. You have to. And you just have to start anew. You have to pick up, start picking up the pieces. And it's time now really to work on yourself. But, um, you know, um, and I, as she does mention that the, she feels very validated watching my videos and yes you know i i validate everything you're going through we all can we all can you know and i'm glad that my videos and and if you're subscribed to other people that's done the channel on narcissism too i'm sure you must feel very validated by their videos as well you know um and it's good to and validation is really really the first i would say really heals and does some justice for you just feeling validated knowing you're not being alone knowing that you you know have family i call them family of assholes because that's what narcs are they're just assholes and jerks and self-centered and you know you don't deserve that um and you know i think you speak about working on the on the wounded child and that's very important that you do that. You know, I've mentioned um, several videos back about, you know, finding out what about you is wounded. You know, if, if there's a lot of rejection, if there's hurt, if there's some anger, and you got to work on those. And um, I know that you're having a very hard time trying to find a therapist um, that specializes in narcissism, and that's it's a very hard to look for because like I said I've you know um, faced that issue as well but I came to the point to where um, I wasn't going to look for any other therapist um, I just decided to and this is just my personal preference so please by all means don't I'm not suggesting you do this it's up to you but for me I've decided that I'm going to allow myself to try to do the healing within myself but also not by myself, but I let God heal me and God's just going to be my therapist and I, and I just work on those things. Now the therapist that I did have, she has been helpful. Yes, you know, she's helped me work on some things. She's helped me work on some anger issues and, you know, helped me, you know, change my thinking around. So I go from there and work from there. Um, and that's just my personal experience, but, um, but what you can do, and this is what I suggest, um, I suggest that uh, if you can't find a therapist that specializes in narcissism, um, there's other elements that you can get a therapist on, like stuff about anger, getting to the, you know, getting, because you have every right to be angry, you know, getting to the point, getting down to, I guess, getting to the root of your anger and understanding your anger, yeah, it's good to have a therapist like to have to, to deal with those issues you know in divide individualized uh, therapy so there are some elements you can work on like anger codependency um you know all kinds of stuff you can work on um let's see yeah anger codependency um people pleasing maybe um you know um there so there, there are certain elements that you can get a therapist on you know uh, healing you know the wounded child you know um, 
abandonment if that's maybe one of your issues or whatever you know there's all kinds of things rejection like I said you know that the, there are some things you that a therapist can't be helpful for if, if you can't find anyone on narcissism like I said just take those little elements that I've that I've pointed out and maybe hopefully what I've pointed out maybe might get you to even think even more issues that you're dealing with you know when you can get a therapist that way or like low self-esteem and your confidence and maybe overthinking and because that's damage that a narcissist does you can find a therapist to help you with that also so um you, you can go that that avenue and as far as the narcissism yourself um and um i remember i she had brought up a book that she ran into and it's by Carol McBride about uh, will I ever be good enough and I have read this book um, not from cover to cover uh, the way my brain kind of is wired I like to go into the middle and work my way back or something that catches my my eye I read it I just read it in different sections and everybody's brains work as differently I mean I'm just never I've never been uh, the kind of person that reads something from first page all the way back. I mean, that's just my brain's just not wired that way. But what I do do, I look through the book, I skim through it. If I see something that interests me, I read it, and I just work my way around, and I am able to eventually read a whole book that way. So yes, it's a very, very, very good book. Um, and you know, the more you read about things about narcissism and really empower yourself about what narcissism is and apply those situations, you know, to what you read or what you see in my videos or anyone else's videos, you know, you can do your own work that way because that's what I'm doing for myself. You know, I, I'm, I'm working on myself, you know, and, you know, do things to make yourself healthy. You know, that's very, very important. Um, but what I have to say is that um, as far as setting boundaries is concerned, because we all know that narcissists don't, the word boundaries, it's just not in their vocabulary. I mean, and this is just my opinion. I mean, if some of you can really set boundaries with your narc parents and really make them stick, I applaud you. Um, but then... If you tend to stay no contact, that's even a bigger boundary. And this, this is just my opinion. Um, being no contact and establishing no contact with your narcissistic parents, family, the whole shebang, really is the biggest boundary you can set. Because you're protecting yourself. You're staying away from the poison. You're not letting any more of their poison, any of their BS into you you just cut it all off and like I've mentioned several times in videos if you have to move 3,000 miles 10,000 miles the other side of the earth whatever do what you have to do you just have to just stay away from those narcs you know very important so um, I think there's some things here I probably want to make sure I touch everything uh, because the you know like I say you know the the emails are really, you know, we, we've, there was a total of five emails between us, but, you know, but just emailing back and forth, and I know it take forever trying to read all of this, but I try to go through the most important, you know, some of the stuff that I can just pull out. Um, but like I said, yeah, prayer, prayer and journal, I'm glad that you're doing that as well, because it does help, and I do it myself. Um, let's see here. Um, trust issues, yeah. That's another thing that you could have a therapist help you work on because, yeah, it's hard to trust people. You know, it really is. You know, I mean, especially with your own family, you would think you could be able to trust your whole family and, and come to the realization of what type of family you have. It's like, well, you can't trust anything because narcs will destroy you and anybody else. So, yeah, that's that's another thing that you can um, find a therapist to work on your own element as well. Um, like I said, um, Silent treatment, uh, you've mentioned about silent treatment, and I have to say about as far as silent treatment, we all know we all know that it's very, it's where narcs just don't grow up. They give you a silent treatment, they don't get you. I mean, think of a kid. I mean, five, six year old kid, and they're always they're so you always used to get to get what they want, until you say no that one time and they get silent, right? They're a tantrum. Sound familiar? 
That's a kid. So really, that's a child's game of silent treatment, even as adults. Like some adults just never grow up. I'm just saying some. So, you know, so that's a trait there that really would tell you that narcs just don't grow up by giving that silent treatment. It's a manipulative mood. They want you to feel sorry for them. They want, they want you basically to kiss their ass, to get along with you type of thing. And you had to draw the line and say, hell no, you know, basically. No, I'm not going to kiss your ass to get along with you. You got to learn. You're not going to always get your way. And I had to do that to my narc mom several times. You know, it's just a child child game. And you just have to say, well, that's their problem. Don't let their silent treatment make it your problem. If they want to play silent treatment, you just go on with your life to hell with them. You know, if they say you're selfish, oh, well, so be it. Let them say what they want to say. This is nothing but a guilt trip. And you just have to just turn your back and walk away. You know. And that's what no contact does. You know. Um, like I said. Uh, yeah. Broken boundaries. Um, finishing off sentences. Talking over you. Yeah. My mo narc mom did some talking over me though. But when I used to get into conflicts with. Uh, my sisters, especially the loudmouth one, oh yeah, she loved to talk over me, definitely. So I've experienced that. Um, now I remember my enabling father, yes, he'd talk over me too. Um, not listening. Um, name calling, my mom never really called, you know, never really called a name except for just leaving me just a retard because I was slow learning in kindergarten up until seventh grade and my enabling father used to call me stupid dumbass so believe me I've and of course my narc sisters would call me whore or I stink or yeah believe me yes that stuff hurts but you know what that's their opinion they're entitled to it you know what you are you know and that's how I am I say well I know what I am they can say their own opinion because their opinion don't count, you know. And it's the attitude you have to say, so, well, what they think of you. And I've seen this saying a lot of times, even on Facebook, where I see sayings, these sayings from different links saying, you know, whatever people think is really none of your business. I think that's a good way to kind of discipline yourself of not caring what people think about you, you know. And so, yeah. Um, child looking after the parent and home rather the other way around. I haven't really experienced that, but I can say this. I remember coming up that my narcissistic mother never got involved with school things like parent-teacher conferences or, you know, open house, those type of things. My, my you know, it, it, or even with these things with the people the slow learning people I guess counselors or whatever my narc mother never dealt with any of that crap guess who she dumped it on my enabling father he took care of all that you know any sporting events that I ever got involved in my dad would go my mom never went um, to be made to feel guilty for actually being born Sometimes I feel that way, yeah. Sometimes I do, but not really. Um, but like I said, you know, everybody's story is different. Uh, but me, but me if I feel guilty for Ashley Bourne, yeah, that's a very normal feeling. And, you know, that's maybe even another element that uh, you can even work with a therapist for. Because most therapists, when you start with a therapist, you know, they always go back from childhood. You know, and that could be an element that you can bring up to a therapist. You know, if you decide to just go to a therapist that can work at least on some elements, you know, that's holding you back, that's, um, you know, depriving of your happiness and the person that you want to become, you can still work on the elements, even though if you can't find anybody that specializes in narcissism. So that I, I would suggest that to you. Um, Let's see, uh, like I said, you said previously, uh, never uh, nurturing, uh, paying any form of interest in schoolwork, no encouragement, no interest, no love, uh, threatening to put uh, to 
put into care, being insignificant. And of course, he said the list goes on and on. Like I just mentioned about the school thing with me, the only thing I've experienced is my dad took, my mom dumped all that mess on my dad. She never got involved with my school stuff, anything. Not even in, um, you know, stuff I did for school. Um, never encouraged me in anything by any stretch of means. Uh, I know what that feels like. You know, no encouragement whatsoever. Um, but, uh, yeah, they, they like to bully. Yes, I've experienced that because the only bullying experience that I ever really got from my narc mom was either she'll put her dad against me or tell my dad a bunch of lies and my dad would just come and attack me. I've experienced that many a times as well as if now as getting a much older age um, before I cut things off with my mom that you know she would sit there and lie to my sisters and tell them a bunch of lies and, or if I say no to my narc mom or you know if I don't agree with her about something or if I don't want to program with her about something oh yeah she would sit there and ha and just rally my narc sisters and tell them a bunch of lies get them all going and started and have them come after me and say a bunch of shit believe me yes I've been there you know and basically it's like I never let them get to me when it was always a shouting match. So yeah, I know. I know exactly, you know, what you're talking about. Um, and then, let me see here. Um, but you can still make a comeback in your life. I mean, yeah, I know you've been robbed about a lot of things that, that you could have been. But you can't let that, you can't beat yourself up about it. It's not your fault. The whole thing is, it's not your fault. It's unfortunate that, yes, we've unfortunately had narcissistic parents, especially starring the mother and an enabling father. Or, in some people's scenarios, both parents. You know, yes, it's very, very hurtful. But at some point, you just got to say enough. And you've got to pick up the pieces, realize what you've been through, realize that you've had narcissistic parents, and what you can do from here on. You know, like I said, work on the elements that's that's really, you know, holding you back. You know, you can either let those things hold you back, or you can break out and break free, and that's where the therapy work comes in, you know. And um, working on those elements, you know, greatly recommend to do that, you know. Because, like I said, it's not easy to find a narcissistic, um, you know, counselor on narcissism. It's very hard to find, but you can't work on other elements surrounding that. So, that there would help you progress in your healing. I do strongly recommend that. Um, let's see here. Like I said, as far as the inner child is concerned, you can work on those elements with your therapist. You know, what's wounded in you. You know, and then, you know, work on whatever the therapist suggests you work on. And then also to do even more work beyond the therapy. And, you know, just not allowing yourself to let anybody hurt you ever again. Which means you have to stand up for yourself or anybody that comes into your life, you know. And if you haven't uh, broken the contact with your mom yet or not, um now's the time and not just her but anybody associated with her siblings um father uh anybody associated with family you know with the family break free from them you know no contact you know you break air you break all ties because right there you're stopping the poison and right there is really the step of taking the right step in the direction of healing and as well that's the only boundary that you can really set you know and you can enforce those boundaries yourself like I said if you have to move 3,000 miles away 10,000 miles away whatever the distance you do it and then you start getting with the therapist working on those elements that I've mentioned and then whatever that can't be worked on you can do them yourself you know um, it's doable and you know um, if you want to keep emailing me you know maybe on something that, that you're struggling with by all means I'd be happy to help um, but like I said yeah 
Um, you've indicated here that writing has really helped get in touch with your inner child. That's awesome because I'm telling you, it's so, so, so therapeutic to write and just get all those thoughts, all those feelings out, out on paper. It's very therapeutic. I do it all the time, you know, and I'm glad that you're doing that. It's a step in the right direction. Uh, but everything takes time. Um, like I said, it's not going to happen overnight. You got to make some progress. Some progress is better than not each and every day. Strive to make progress, you know, always. Um, let me see. Um, feeling parentless like no one loves you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I can understand what that feels like, you know. More, more than you'll ever know. It's like you had to come to this realization to a grieving point that, um, and I've mentioned this in several videos back about, you know, you got to kind of live like they're dead to you. Narc mother and all. They're dead to you and that you um, have to become your own parent. But you have to define what being a good parent is. What's it mean to you? Like, what's it mean to be the mother that you always wanted? Sometimes you have to become both parents, both mother and father. You know, you can do it. It's very doable. What, you know, what do loving parent, what does a loving, nurturing parent mean to you that's non-narcissistic, you know, which is loving, nurturing, the biggest cheerleader, and you learn how to do those things. And the best thing I could say is to Google those, you know. Sit down and think what being a good parent is to you, you know, the loving, the nurturing, you know, and find what nurturing means because everyone has their own ideas of nurturing. And once you learn those behaviors, you can become your own loving and nurturing parent, non-narcissistic, non may I add. And you become that, and it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight, you know. Especially, like, becoming your own biggest own supporter, which, you know, is also important. Become your own cheerleader. Become your own biggest supporter. You know, catch yourself when you try to beat yourself up and saying bad things to yourself. You can catch yourself doing that. Think about what a real good parent would say. Say, hey, you know what? You tried your best. You did your best. And you know what? You're still a champion. You're still a winner. You are still awesome. You know, you got to tell that to yourself. You know, you know, like if you lost a competition or if you didn't get the job that you're looking for, whatever it is that you're competing for and you didn't win, but you did your best, pat yourself on the back and say, you know, and that's what a good parent will do. Hey, you did your best. We'll get them next time. Let's find out what we did wrong, work on those, correct those, and now the next time will be even better. That's how you build yourself back up, by becoming that nurturing parent. But like I said, it does take work. You can do it. You really can, you know, and I've done it for myself, you know. I mean, even if I didn't have a fiancé, you know, I can, I can do it myself, you know. There's a lot of things I know I can do for myself that and I don't rely on any man you know at all so um let me see um you know and i remember mentioning like the gifts you know like i i love to write and you know what you gotta look at yourself and say what are you good at you know you good at writing artwork maybe um maybe dancing find yourself a hobby you're never told to have a hobby maybe get into a hobby Maybe that you're curious about. I've mentioned this before. You know, and you might surprise yourself and say, holy crap, I didn't really realize I was good at this. You know, because hobbies really keep you grounded. Hobbies really, I guess, help define the potential that you have in you. You know, get into any kind of hobby, you know, whatever. You know, or if you're curious about, even if it's crafting, you know, whatever. You know, writing a book or dancing or I don't know archery something or canoeing I don't know any type of hobby that really suits you or that you're curious try it out you're never too old you know I just say age is nothing but a number just like me I'm 44 years old nothing but a number you know it's what you have in your heart how you feel inside is what matters you know that's really the youth I always feel young you know, and I don't know about you, but you can feel that way yourself, you know. Never be afraid to try anything new. 
Um, let's see. But um, I'm hoping that um, this video has uh, worked for you. Um, from what I've, you know, have stated, you know, that, um, you know, I don't even know if you've really have gone. I don't really remember. Maybe I can just read this, come through this really quick. Um, I don't know if you have decided to go no contact with your narcissistic mother. Um, I don't see that here. Um, so I don't know if you have or not, but you know, I could say the best boundary that you can set towards any narc, whether it be a narcissistic mother, father, enabling father, um, siblings whatever you know it's time to really cut loose and let me and just cut all the poison all the way around you know and never be afraid to, to be alone you know because like i said in the last video it's i'd rather be alone than rather be around a bunch of narcs forever trying to destroy who i am and try to make me feel miserable you gotta break free so i hope this helps um in the next video, um, I'll be talking about um, the uh, next next person, um, you know, next email. Um, can't remember what it's all about though. I just read, just received it, um, just read about it about a couple of nights ago. So that will be my next video. Um, actually, you know, I can just see, look through here and see what it is. Um, if I could even find it, um, so that way I can keep you in tune of what the next video is going to be. Oops, wrong email here. Um, and she just tells me her story. Um, shoot. Um, This this is a lady of mine. It's a, the next lady where she talks about growing up that she had no idea what a narcissistic mother was, um, and this she just talks about basically her um, younger sister was brought up on a pedestal, which really right there tells you right there okay she's designated a golden child. So just a brief synopsis of what the the video was. That's what the next video is going to be about. Um, let me see here and um she's 22 i'll have to say the age she's 22 years old so um it's not now that i mentioned the age mentioned age in this standpoint here though i can just tell you that's what the next video is going to be about so this is mary allen signing off and um lady in the uk i hope this really helps um and we can e continue to email back and forth if you'd like so um Mary Allen signing off. Thank you. Love all of you. Wish you all well. Thank you. Take care. Goodbye for now.